What's up guys and welcome back to yet another Team Drawcasting presentation. We are back live here uh, between SFCB and Invasion Bazooka in the semi-finals I think of the losers bracket here. The winner of this game will move on and meet Orange in the finals of the losers bracket after Orange fell to Team Drawcasting's competitive team uh, in the winners bracket as well. So right now the bands have been done. Let's take a look at them. We see Mage Bane, Polywalk Priest, Tempest, Parasite, Torturer, Kraken, uh, Keeper of the Forest, and is that Pharaoh? <laughs> oh wow, okay, so Pharaoh being banned as well. Uh, and joining me, of course, is none other than Mr. Bex, who will go over the bands right now. Well, not too sure how I'm going to go over the bands since you already gone through them, but yeah, nonetheless, it is I, Bex. Um, yeah, looking forward to this game. We had quite a... Oh, quite a long break. I <laughs> Some a little bit of trolling going on right there. All is good. All is good in the world. What? And yeah, so we have SFCB going up again. Invasion Bazooka right here. So of course this is the losers bracket. Uh, they are fighting for their lives right now. And hero picks are on the way. So let's take a quick look at the Hellboy team. We have Bubbles, Andromeda, and Plague Riders. So. Um, well, definitely excited simply because of that bubbles, man. You know I love bubbles. Plague Rider, uh, pretty much OP ulti, I guess you could say. It. And Andromeda, overall very nice support. You can always save uh, your allies and do big plays as well. But what about the Legion team? Uh, the Legion team. Let me take a look. It's Magmas and Forsaken Archer at the moment as they're picking their third and fourth hero. Uh, as you said, both teams are fighting for their lives. Oh this is. A this is actually a repeat of round one here. Uh, SFCB and Invasion Bazooka actually met in round one where uh, Invasion Bazooka came out on top and forced SFCB into a seven, six match actually, six, six match comeback here. And they are four more games, four more wins away from the Grand Champion. Will they do that? We will have to see. But yeah, right now they are picking their third uh, and fourth hero. Who would they go for? Right now they're shadow picking that Myrmidon and Electrician. And if they pick that Myrmidon, I'm pretty sure Sarah is going to make a lot of noise who is standing right behind me uh, because uh, I know Myrmidon, we spoke about it a few times not a very viable hero in top tier play anymore because it's just so easy to evade all his skills so they are using down their time right now so we will have to see what happens uh, but yeah right now nothing much to talk about just Magnus and Forsaken Archer you should talk more about your Bubbles and Sarah's favorite hero Plague Rider as well yeah of course Bubbles I personally I think uh, such an awesome hero of course you can initiate well you can uh, run away I guess you could call it he has high survivability would be the more appropriate term um, but yeah Legion team though they are gonna pick up Myrmidon as well as Master of Arms so that is a bit unusual we have seen a Master of Arms uh, in the past but it's pretty much died out and we don't ever see it anymore sometimes we do see it as a support which you know is always debatable but it is what it is, and of course, Myrmidon, we've had this discussion before, so I don't want to go into that anymore. And over on the Alborn side, we are still waiting for their picks right here, 3 seconds left, plus 20 additional time. Where they are uh, shadow picking Flint Beastwood, though, so they can definitely go for that. They haven't uh, chosen their cherry, so there we go. We finally see both a Moraxis as well as a Flint Beastwood, so that is interesting right there. Uh, Flynn Beast would be pretty standard, I guess, but Moraxis, what do you think about that, man? Uh, Moraxis, of course, a really strong hero. Uh, can be played as a mid, uh, dual mid, or even a solo side lane. Really strong uh, harass and initiator with that PK, definitely. Uh, but the Legion side right now, if you just take a look uh, at the lineup, they're basically screaming tri lane again. So they're trying to bring back the tri lane metagame here? I don't know. Uh, but we see the Myrmidon and uh, Magmas combination, which has died out after such a long time and they're trying to revive it I guess here uh, but it does look like it's gonna be a Magmas Myrmidon Forsaken Archer tri lane uh, with a Master of Arms solo mid or something I'm not too sure because it's really interesting to see if you look at the Legion lineup it's three agility heroes and like three semi carries here so really really interesting to see for the Legion lineup so for the Hellbomb full lineup it is gonna be Bubbles, Plague Rider, Moraxis, Flint, Beastwood and Andromeda. Legion team, Magmas, Forsaken Archer, Myrmidon, uh, Master of Arms and Valkyrie. What do you think of both teams? Who do you like better? Hellbomb team. Enough said man. Of course they have the Bubbles as well as the uh, Moraxis so definitely interesting over there. Of course they would have pretty good initiation in my opinion. 
uh, once they do get their portal keys. But at the same time, if you look at the Legion team, they have that Magmas, so you can never uh, count a Magmas out. And once you get to portal key, you're just really, really strong in terms of initiation as well as counter initiation. And you can set up kills and gank so easily, in fact. And actually, Legion team, of course, choosing Forsaken Archer as well as Valkyrie. Now, that is a bit unusual for me because Valkyrie is there fine, but I don't know, do you agree with going with both Valkyrie and Forsaken Archer? Uh, that's actually really weird, and that's why I wanted to point out three agility heroes on the Legion team. Uh, you know, I don't know how they're gonna play more uh, Master of Arms as is he gonna be a support or a carry? And same thing goes for Valkyrie and for second archer this is real just really really interesting to see and here we see the close-up of the Shenlong uh, I really hate that old avatar it looks really horrible but uh, you know your side is on the Ooh, okay I didn't know you can do that in a spectator view here but anyway ooh. and we crashed apparently again so play around with the camera more Bex that will force a crash so sorry about that we will to get back into the game soon, just give us a second here. Uh, as Bex was trying to admire the uh, what's that called? The Shenlong old avatar. But let me speak about the Legion team a bit because you, you went with Hellborn, so you know what? I'm gonna side with Legion team just because they have the beast favorite hero, Myrmidon. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure Sarah is really excited about that, but yeah, I'm just gonna side with the Legion team just because they have more carries. You know, it's gonna be interesting to see how the Legion team fa uh, plays this game out, definitely looking forward to that. And while all this is being said, we are trying to rejoin the game here. Uh, give us a minute. Um, the PC is loading slightly slower here. I'm going to pass the mic back to Bex, uh, since he was the one that decided to play around with the camera. What do you have to say for yourself, Bex? I'll do it all over again if I could. Okay, that's his answer from Bex. But yeah, anyway, just give us a second here while we try to get back into this game. And there we go. We are finally back in the game and it's already 40 seconds. So did we miss out on any action? Just not yet. Uh, so yeah, we are of course uh, in the semi-finals of the loser's bracket here. Both teams are fighting it at out for that final spot in the loser's bracket to play against Orange for the chance to play in the grand finals here. So this is SFCB going up against Bazooka. Two top tier teams coming from Malaysia. Sally dropping down into the loser's bracket, battling for their lives here. Who will come out on top and who will get that fourth place uh, in this tournament? Mr. Bex, go over the lanes. Yep, so at the top lane we have a Flint Beastwood as well as an Andromeda going against this Master of Arms who might be in a little bit of trouble. In fact, never mind, he is gonna be okay. Middle lane though, we have Bubbles going up against a Valkyrie. And bottom lane, we have Moraxis Fleet Rider going up against Myrmidon, Magmus, and Forsaken Archer. So a tri lane at that bottom lane. So Hellborn team are aware of it. And they are playing very passively. They know that the supports are somewhere nearby, so they do not want to risk it. And rightly so. So it's still very early on. No early kills just yet, unfortunately. And I don't know, man. Um, they definitely will win the bottom lane for the Legion team. Top lane, though, do you agree with the solo Master of Arms? Definitely a really weird lane. <laughs> Hold on, Zach. Yep, so it turns out he was eating, guys. You heard it here first. You have Arctic Shadow eating. Big surprise there. But yeah, so Bubbles actually doing a good job at the middle lane against this Valkyrie as I do have to apologize if you guys can hear the background noise. We are of course streaming and casting live on site at uh, Orange Wang Samaju right here. So we've been here since morning so it's definitely been a lot of fun as well. Yeah, pretty exciting games you know. Especially the previous game, I believe it was a 70 minute game or 80. Yeah, so around there. Uh, that was a really, really close game between uh, TTC as well as Orange. And of course, Orange will go down to the loser's bracket where they will have to fight it their way back. And that means that TTC is still 
undefeated in this tournament thus far. So that is definitely interesting and exciting to look forward to. But yeah, now that Arctic has finished his food, maybe he can give some insight on the game. Yeah, sorry about that earlier on, but here you see Magnus and Mermudon both level 1. They are stacking and pooling, I think, there. Uh, but is there a warp here? Can you check, please, sir? No, uh, Mermudon and Magnus. Down. Oh my gosh, this camera, man, so horrible. But anyway, yeah, so they are deciding to pull this single stack uh, after dewarding this camp here. I really disagree with this style of play. I want to see that. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So they are going to double stack pull this further. But still, I would prefer to see Magnus and Mermudon start roaming <laughs> as the pool actually fails here. And the creeps will go back into the wave. Uh, so. I'm really looking forward to Mermodon and Magnus maybe start roaming a little bit because middle I believe is losing uh, If we take a look at some of the stats uh, Valkyrie sitting at 10 and 5 compared to Bubble sitting at 13 and 8 So losing slightly I guess not too badly But I definitely want to see Mermodon and Magnus Instead of just doing nothing at bottom lane as they are now going to roam to that middle uh, Top lane as you said earlier on it is Master of Arms solo um, Which we don't see too often but he can be played really well as a solo hero of course He does have that stun and slow so I don't know, he, he's going up against a Flynn Beastwood solo as well, so it really depends on who gets the better farm, I guess, and who gets the better harass. Yeah, but you have to keep in mind though that a Flynn Beastwood has a support in the form of that Andromeda, you can see right there. So, MOA has to constantly play uh, passively, you know, does not want to overextend, where he can just get picked off really, really quickly. Flynn Beastwood is almost level 6. So once he reaches that, no, the ulti, the burst damage from the uh, ultimate right there can do a lot of damage. So he has to keep an eye out for that, not to get caught off by that and draw the common stun. And now we might see a, a gank at this middle lane though. They have the water sight, but Bubbles is aware that something is up at this middle lane. Of course, Myrmidon is here, Magmas is here as well. Will they get the kill? The weed field is gonna land actually, and Arrow will not. Able to follow up is this help but Legion team rather and good shots of away, but uh, five minutes in, still no kill. Five minutes in, still no kill. Both teams playing really passively. Uh, Legion team tried to set something up here at this middle lane, but was unable to do so. Uh, of course, going up against the bubbles is always hard to kill, especially with a level one Magnus. Uh, if you head over to the players here, you see that Magnus is being played by Xiao Mao and Flawless on the Myrmidon. Uh, I, I've noticed this about SFCB, no offense to them, they're a really strong team, but their support heroes are always really underleveled, like extremely underleveled when you compare them to other teams' players. Uh, for example, in this game, you see both Myrmidon and Magnus only now hitting level 2, and that level 1 says, oh, as action is middle lane, uh, Bubble's gonna shell surf in, but he is getting counter initiated on. There you go, ulti by that Bubbles as well, but he will get taken down by Zerg Rush. So, big plays coming out from Zerg Rush, not too sure what Bubbles was doing there. Uh, as well, but yeah, you know, as I was saying before, ooh, just a perfect rune as well for this Valkyrie. He's he's having a good day here, this Mr. Zerg Rush. I'm not gonna have to shake his hand later for some luck or something, but um, I, I just want to see the Magmas and Luminon maybe switch to a more dual lane kind of thing and start getting some levels. As there you go, Magmas gonna go in on for the stun, and Ulti gonna be used as well as the crippling volley. Ma but look at that, uh, what's his name? Moraxes, they're tanking like a boss and no, he will survive this and top lane Hazard. invasion mount to Flynn Beastwood he will take down that Master Roms and that's what we were talking about Flynn Be oh wow for second Archer actually going in for the kill and almost got taken down there but he was able to Crippling Volley onto that Plague Rider and survive this but top lane like I said earlier uh, Andromeda and Flynn Beastwood doing a really good job taking down that Master of Arms and look at the level get right now Level 7 Flint Beastwood against a level 4 Master of Arms. So uh, to me, right now, I think Master of Arms is pretty much useless at this top lane. I would like to see him start roaming as well. Or maybe get some support from Myrmidon or Magnus. Because he is just too level gap to take on this Flint Beastwood 1v1. Just one flare, a few shots, and you know, an ulti and Master of Arms will go down. Sitting only at 625 HP, of course. So. Yeah, of course, that is always a debate, you know, sending or even picking MOA, I guess you could say, you know, never know where to lane him. But some teams prefer to send him as a support, some people send him solo mid, solo silent, there's just so many variations, but there's still no uh, commonly agreed role, I guess you could say. And yeah, 2 to 1 hero kills now, just under 8 minutes in, and for Sikonacha enjoying some free farm for the time being at least. But the top farmer in the game is still that Valkyrie at the lane. 290 gold per minute compared to a 284 
Cooper Minute at that top lane in the form of that Flint Beastwood. And Andromeda still doing a good job of controlling the runes, you know, camping the runes for the bubbles at the middle lane. Uh, he also got a regeneration rune for the Valkyrie. So that's all good and still no gank just yet unfortunately. So yeah, only three kills so far, eight, eight and a half minutes into this game. Really passive game, kind of reminding me of the previous game, which I hope not, it will not be. I don't want to see another farming game, to be honest, or another 70 minute game. Uh, hopefully that this game will end a bit faster. Uh, this is going to be played out throughout one whole day. Orange as well as CTC team, both waiting for the results of this, com uh, this match, as well as the following match. Uh, to line up a grand finals game here, we might be here until the late and late night of this of today, which I hope we will not go, which will not happen here. Uh, so hopefully we will see action start picking up soon as I think Beast will just spamming those ultis. Wow, just doing so much damage with his master arms, dropping him to slightly above half HP, and that's you know that's just so much damage coming out from him. Yep, definitely true. MOA just having such a horrible time at the top lane. But of course, nothing he can do, let's be honest. And now, Magnus has rotated to the middle lane right here. Uh, trying to give some support to the Valkyrie, but it is not going to be easy. It is a Bubbles. One of the uh, heroes with the best survivabilities in the game. Meanwhile, though, bottom lane, FA just trying to pick up his farm. Of course, he is going up against a Moraxis as well as a Plague Rider. So he cannot uh, overextend can get caught off really really quickly and again just look at Flint Beastwood just dominating the top lane right now it's sitting at 287 go per minute look at that just putting some harass onto MOA not using the stun just yet not too sure why he might go down doesn't use the power supply he did at the very last minute so he will go down two hero kills apiece so two hero kills, uh, two hero kills a piece right now. Flint, oh, middle lane though, it's gonna be three to two right now. It's Andromeda coming from the side. Ulti gonna be used as well. So Valkyrie's leap not gonna save him. Actually gonna lead to his demise here as he drops down at this middle lane. Uh, top lane, we still see Flint Beastwood a absolutely picking up on his farm, uh, being the top farmer of this game right now. 315 gold per minute. Uh, you know we have seen uh, Flint Beastwood die out from the scene. For a while now, you know, I, I'm glad that he's making a slight comeback, you know, with impunity in this game. Uh, I personally like playing Beastwood a lot. I don't know about you, uh, but I play him a lot, of course. So I don't know why he's not as picked up as as before. He's kind of underrated now. Well, I guess it's just uh, due to how the meta game is shifted. You know, uh, more tanky and push style heavy. So can't really blame it as pretty much all carries have kind of been phased out, especially the melee carries. But we have been starting to see a resurgence and stun, common stun onto Master of Arms, and he will get taken out right there. But then Ronda will pay for it with his life. But overall, good trade. Of course, Clint Beastwood did get the kill, as well as Valkyrie. So, still pretty even game thus far. Uh, Bubbles enjoying some free farm at the middle lane. It's yeah, still anyone's game to play here, but uh, the Hub One Side Invasion Bazooka has taken a slight advantage here. One kill advantage, 2.3k gold, and 3.7k experience advantage in this game. So they are looking like they are in the better spot right now. If you take a look at the GPM tab, wow, the, the, the difference between the Legion and the Hub One Side is just huge here. You see, Forsaken Archer and uh, Valkyrie both sitting at about 260 gold per minute apiece, and then the rest of them are all at like 80. So. The supports are getting absolutely no farm, of course. They are, they. Oh, okay, hearing some screams coming out from the cafe here as a uh, deny, maybe there you go, deny uh, by that master of arms. So ulti gonna be used, and for master of arms looking to track. Oh, just left the circle, and he will get taken down. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have survived anyway. As Andromeda was coming from the side. There you go, Shenlong waveform in, but he will not be able to follow up there. And this game is just. If, if the Legion team does not start controlling this game, it's going to get more and more out of hand for them. That indeed, my friend. Especially with the Flint Beastwood having such amazing farm at the top lane. Already has a Blessed Orb. Uh, just 12 minutes in, so that is really impressive. So he is going to go for that Geometer's Bane, but bottom lane though, we might be seeing some action right here. Magnus trying to set up a gank, but unable to, unfortunately. The Alboin team does have a water sight right there, so they knew he was coming. So that is going to be all for now, at least. And yeah, back to the farming game, I guess you could say.
And so right now, 30, 13 minutes into this game, Flynn Biso is just continuing his farm at that top lane. Absolutely free farming, and that's going to be a bad thing for the Legion side. He's going to take down that tower soon as well. well there you go, he's going to take down that tower. tower. And is going to further uh, pick up on his farm. And this is actually really interesting to see. I don't see Mouse. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, Mouse is a support hero. He plays support, if I'm not mistaken. So... Interesting to see him play uh, Flame Beastwood instead in this game as now Morax is giving chase onto his Forsaken Archer, but he is just too fast and too quick for his Moraxis to chase him. Uh, Magmus is lurking in the background here. Blake Rider, you could easily get spotted and get taken down. Myrmidon is there as well, both sitting at level 4. Plague Rider and Magmus, they know absolutely nothing. Oh, there you go. Next one's gonna run into Weep, we're gonna hit stun as well, but not enough damage. Come on, for this help on. I mean, each team has Forsaken Archer gonna miss that crippling volley as well. In comes Bubbles, and there goes the combination. My friend Magmus, what in the world are you doing right there? You are gonna try TP out of here, and you will, but I don't know. Uh, Legion team looking like they are just. Tired mentally, maybe you know they have played six games, having to fight back from the losers bracket after losing the first round against Bazooka here. They're trying to come back into this game, uh, but right now they, they just somehow seem mentally tired for some for, for a reason. So yeah. Tell you what, man, they're not the only ones that are mentally tired. We've been here since 9 a.m. and you know I only had half an hour of sleep. Just saying. The to the some people. So. Uh, you know, but we'll leave that as it is. But yeah, they do get the bottom tower right there, and with that, a 7,000 experience as well as a five uh, goal rather, as well as a 5,000 experience lead. And it, things are just looking good for the Hellborn team right now. Flint Beast would almost uh, picking up his firebrand, so he will get that. Geometry's been very soon, but here we go. Action might ensue right here. Lava Surge as well as Crippling Body. Piercing arrows. Gonna be used onto Flint Beastwood, but still surviving. How is Flint Beastwood so tanky right there? And FA, you will go down perhaps. Narrowly escaping. Crippling Body onto Bubbles. Bubbles taking lots of damage. He will get taken out. So one for one trade, surprisingly. Actually, two heroes right now for the Elmo team, excuse me. And of course, you have to keep in mind though. Maraxis was not even in that clash, so big factor right there. Yeah, definitely a big clash there for the Legion side. Crawling their way back into this game. They are now at a 3 kill deficit, not all too big. Uh, 15 minutes into this game, it is a 6.6k gold and 4.1k experience advantage. But do take note, Maraxis is trying to pick up his farm at that top lane. If you take a look at the gold advantage here, it is pretty big considering it's about 16 minutes in this game. As Valkyrie now will pick up a invisibility rune as well. It's just not some shouting going on yet again uh, in the land cafe. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is the Orange Esports League Season 1. Uh, we are TTC. My name is Arctic Shadow. Joining me is, of course, Bex. And we are live on site casting right now. So if you're interested, head on down to T uh, Orange Wang Tamaju and, you know, say hi to us. Give us a shout out. Uh, but most of the players here, they have, they are really tired here as two of the TDC competitive team members, you know, they're actually falling asleep right now. And it has been a really long day and they still have to wait for this game and the following game to finish before they can actually play the Grand Finals. So hopefully we will wrap this up soon. Yup, could not agree more. It has been a long day, but it has been an enjoyable one. And that has a kill right there at the top lane. So Valkyrie thinking he was so sneaky with that invisible Lily rune. But of course does go down in the end right there. So Forsaken Archer trying to pick up on his farm but still unable to only 70 creep kills. Actually doing quite well in the creep kill department. But this is what it is. <laughs> that is true that Valkyrie got taken down yet again. Uh, 9 to 5 in favor of the Hellborn side right now. This game is just looking to be another farm fest to be honest, you know. Action just dying off a little bit right now. 17 minutes into this game. Uh, and this is, of course, is only just the semi-finals of the loser's bracket. So we still have one more game to go through before the grand finals. And we will be stuck here, Mr. Bex. I know you're face palming yourself right now, but still, you have to do it. And yeah, we have to see what happens in this game. Uh, can SFCB make a comeback as they have gone behind right now? Uh, 8.3k goal advantage, that's actually pretty big considering it's only 18 minutes into this game right now. Uh, for sake, look at Flynn Beastwood's farm, 470, 424 gold per minute. 
That is just huge. What items does he have? Uh, already has the Ghost Marchers as well as a Firebrand. He's gonna help pick up this uh, Regen Rune as well. Well, actually deciding to leave it there as Andromeda will camp it instead. And he's gonna make his way back to top lane to try and continue his farm. So yeah. Yep, of course, like you pointed out, he is gonna get his Geometer's Bane really, really soon. But Arrow narrowly missing right there, almost landing on Bubbles. Who actually does have his portal key, so that is gonna be a lot of fun for the Elboy team. Finally, gonna get some good initiation from their side at least. Uh, Marax is still no portal key just yet, but hopefully he does get that very very soon. Uh, look, taking more, uh, taking a more look at items. So Flint Beast who finally has his uh, Geometer's Bane. Uh, Legion team though only Blessed Orb picked up by Forsaken Archer, so. Still a very far, very far, far away <laughs> from that item, but still it is just a farming game. I don't know what it is about today, but all the games have been really passive, not too sure why. Yeah, they need to start setting a time limit on these games because it's taking really long. And you know, all these, you know, with no time limit, they just keep farming. It's 20 minutes into this game. Yes, we have seen 14 kills, but... Uh, you know, both teams just keep on farming. If you look at the GPM tab, it's really high for both teams. Well, not really high, but decently high for both teams as it does look like the Hellborn side is looking to push down this top tier 2 tower though. Uh, will they get it down? That is the question. It does look like they are going to back off slightly here as Forsaken Archer is taking down the tier 1 mid tower here. But yeah, 20 minutes into this game, it's still pretty much farm, 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 farm. And then who gets the better initiation or who gets farmed faster or who makes the, the first Legion mistake, something like that. And, uh, I just don't really like this gameplay. I want to see fast-paced, you know, action-packed gameplay. Could not agree with you more, my friend. As the action going on right here, Money Shot will not get the kill though. As Mag with Lava Zone just bubbles, bubbles goes down. But the Hellborn team still in pursuit. Flint Beast who needs to be careful though. Piercing arrows. Almost getting him right there. Will support out safely though. Morax is very tanky so he will survive. So almost going down Flint Beast but narrowly, narrowly escaping. Yeah, so Hellborn side doing a really, really good job there. I uh, know not Hellborn, sorry, Legion team doing a really good job there. My apologies. As they managed to call back two kills and a three kill gold deficit, you know. Uh, they managed to get back into this game right now. And I guess the Hellborn side just got a little bit too overconfident uh, going into that clash. Trying to take the Legion team out, but no heroes died for the Legion side. And in fact, two heroes going down for the Hellborn team. And it's not looking too good for the... The, the, I mean, it's not to say not looking too good, but basically it's a really even game right now. And it's still anyone's game to play for. In 20 minutes into this game, there is no distinctive clear advantage right now. And, uh, that's not to say annoying to see, but it's, you know, it's that farming game again. And I don't know what's it up with today, or maybe it's just the whole Southeast Asian scene, but it seems to be the, the, the team for today. Farm, farm, and more farm. Yeah, but given their hero composition, can't really blame them. Of course, they have both the Forsaken Archer as well as Flint Beastwood on both teams. So, you know, they gotta rely on the late game. And then right now, Flint Beastwood has a huge advantage over the Forsaken Archer. But, yeah, you never know. Things can change. Momentum can swing in favor of the opposing team at any point. You know, all it takes is one mistake and the game can be thrown. But... I don't know, it's still pretty even. 7 to 9 right now, 22 minutes in basically. And I'm still waiting for the portal key on Maraxis. Maybe once they have that, they'll start initiating more. So Bubbles has had his portal key for quite some time now, but they have not chosen to use it effectively just yet. So perhaps waiting for Maraxis to get more items, but we'll have to wait and see. There really isn't much to say right now in this game. It's just continuing the farming, farming, farming part of the game. As uh, you know, Forsaken Archer and Valkyrie continue to try and pick up on their farm here. And the same thing can be said for the Hell One side. They are just continuing to farm here. And Marax is trying to get that PK, I think, about 600 gold away. So we just have to see who makes the initiation and who gets the first mistake.
Nothing beast with working his way on his top tier 2 tower, but in comes Magmas with an invisibility from that Valkyrie. He's gonna stun the illusions only though, as Andromeda is still there, and he was trying to set something up here at the top lane. As more noise coming out from the Cyber Cafe, we are we apologize. Uh, but yeah, that's that's all the action that's gonna be for now. And again, both teams just retreating into their quarters of the map and just continuing to farm, which I really hate to see. Yep, so right now, Moraxis does finally have his portal key, so they can definitely look to start uh, setting up more clashes, forcing engages, basically. But, I don't know, they just seem afraid, I guess you could say, uh, to do so. You know, not willing to take the risk. But, you know, at the same time, you know, it, they are fighting for their lives, so can't really blame them. But hopefully we will see more action soon. As Mermidon doing a good job of sacking right there. And they might try to set up a gank at this top lane though Flynn Beastwood unsus unsuspecting little victim he is But he will fall back safely but bottom lane though not the same can be said As for Taken Archer taking lots of pressure he will go down So just like that a gank set up by the Hellborn team of course Legion team did not have any sight right here And that was what led to his demise Now they are gonna push this tower down Right now, action at this bottom lane. Bubbles using that ulti here. Uh, Flame Beast were coming in with the flare, doing a lot of damage, but already two heroes down for the Legion side. L1 team basically gonna push down this bottom tier 2 tower with no resistance coming from the Legion side. And now we feel, I can't really see what's going on. Mr. Vex, here we go. There you go. The L1 side is diving onto the Legion team. Valkyrie drops down. Master of Ram is running for his life here. As the Hellborn side will just continue their rampage on this tower. And they will be able to take down this church tower and provide them with either, even more further uh, map control here. Uh, as well as the advantage in this game. So, the Hellborn have destroyed the Legion <laughs> tower. a bit of a mis mistype there here by Flawless. But yeah, so really good plays from the Hellborn side. It does look like they're coming out on top. A triple stacked Ancient Creeps here as well. I like to see first, uh, Flame Beast will pick that farm up. He does have 2.7k saved up. What do you think he's going for, Bex? Probably uh, his attack modifier next, but not too sure what. <clears throat> of course, there are many variations, and you know, each has its own ups and downs. So, not really familiar with. You know, like you said, Malfoy doesn't usually play carry, so uh, I haven't actually seen him play Flint Beastwood, so can't really predict just yet. But I'm just gonna say portal key for the lows. We want to see a portal key and a spell shard on this uh, Flame Beastwood, that is for sure. That ulti is going to do so much damage with those two skills, but uh, maybe that, with the spell shards level 3, but of course that is just us TTC take, take controlling to a ne next level here. Uh, but in this game, I expect him to maybe pick up a... anything. Probably a Firebrand, I guess. Oh, he already has a Firebrand, he has a Geometer Spade, so I'm thinking either a Frostwolf Skull or some damage here uh, in the form of a Savage Maze. It really depends how the Legion team decides to get their items as well so uh, right now we're back to the farming stage yet again 12 to 7 in favor of the Halbon side Legion team definitely not out of this just yet but things are looking pretty grim for them there's not a possible clash at the middle lane arrow not gonna land and Hellboy team will fall back safely so what could have been a great clash, unfortunately the arrow did not land and the game, uh, the clash rather, were reset. But again, you look at the top lane, just constantly farming is this fun beast. So he has his ice brand now, so gonna work towards that Frostful Skull very shortly. And once he has that, no, it's gonna be really, really difficult for the uh, Legion team to deal with him. Uh, let's take a quick look at his goal per minute, 433 goal per minute right there. So he is having an insane amount of farm. Uh, the closest is only Bubbles with 316, so still far, far ahead. In fact, Bubbles actually has 2.3k gold saved up, so what do you think he's gonna go for? What am I gonna think Bubbles is gonna go for? Probably a uh, hack tier. I, I just wanna see a hack on him, or maybe a codex or something like that. Uh, 
I really don't know. It really depends on the item pickup from the Legion team as well. Because right now they have absolute control and they have better initiation as well with that Maraxis having the PK. So definitely look uh, as well as that bubbles as well so they have the initiation there i definitely want to see some damage items coming up from the hellbone team to just annihilate this legion side as bubbles picks up yet another regeneration rune and they're just con gonna continue to the farm 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 that's all i'm gonna say 11k goldie 7.2k exclusive that basically isn't anything much to talk about every time bex passes the mic to me you know, they just go into farming mode. Maybe they sense that I am talking and they like to hear me say farm. I don't know. But every time I pass Bex back the mic, action happens. So let's test it out, Mr. Bex. Well, no action just yet, though. So your prediction isn't true, unfortunately. As I don't know, still 12 to 7 in favor of the Hellboy team. 10k or 11k, rather, ex uh, gold advantage as well as the 7,000. Experience advantage as action middle lane. Nope, got scammed right there. I thought it was action, but not gonna choose to go in right there. So, once again, still a very passive game, but no, they do not want to risk it, do not want to throw it, uh, do not want to throw the game basically. Of course, they, their lives are basically on the line for this tournament. And I'm actually surprised they have not taken the uh, stack right here. That would give a Flint Beast with a lot of farm, yes, he might need to be careful right here. Master of Arms coming in, but uses the Geometer's Bane. He will be able to fall back safely. So again, still no kills just yet now. Just under 30 minutes in. Still a farming game for the most part. Now both teams just content on farming up their items, you know, choosing not to uh, go in and clash. So what do you think about this? Right now, I really hope we don't go into another 17 minute game here. I would just rage at the players. I'll go there and like alternate F or their computers or something here. But right now, uh, both teams just playing so passive. They're not willing to go in yet again. We see. I know that both teams know exactly what is on the line here. You know, they, they're fighting for a spot to play against Orange for that uh, that grand final spot as well. You know, and it guarantees them a third placing here, a top three placing uh, in this tournament. But still, this is taking a really long time. And you know, both teams they are just continuing to farm and farm it out. Uh, who do you think is actually going to win the farming game, Mr. Swarley? And he does not, he, he refuses to talk here, so, um, I think for this game here, the Legion team will have a big chance if this goes into the really late game because, you know, they have three semi-carries, uh, along with that Magnus, if he gets that PK off, he can do a lot of damage, but, uh, the Hellbone side is equally as strong, they do have a Flint Beast with, who is one of the top, uh, hard carries of this game, along with Marax, Bubbles, Andromeda, and Play Riders. You just have a better uh, clash composition here, so to say. But how about you, Bex? Who do you think will win in the late game? <laughs> yeah, definitely true what you said. Um, I don't know. Well, on paper at least, definitely the Legion team, but as the game has been going, I think a Hellboy team still has it. Uh, I believe Frost of Skull is finished on. Flint Beastwood, so yeah, there we go. Looking at the uh, items on the courier right here, so he does have his Frostal Skull ready and is being delivered at the as we speak. Rather, look at Magmas though, taking lots of damage. Ultimate money shot, no, will not connect. In fact, ulti used by MOA right there, so would not have mattered nonetheless. And still, no action is at, as they might attempt Congo right here, so. Been a bit, a little bit sneaky. Of course, Legion team do not have any ward of sights, so they can potentially do this without them knowing. But you know, if they're good enough, they can definitely uh, send something as well. Now they are starting to chip away at this combo. Uh, not too I mean, I, I'm not sure why Flip Beast is attacking outside the uh, combo pit. Uh, so maybe that's why Master doesn't usually play carry. I'm not too sure. What's he do what he's doing right here? You know, just missing. Let me, let me just go in. You know. Maybe we can find out what's going on. Hmm. I'm not too sure what's going on right here. What what is he doing? There we go! So finally going inside. Finally he hits. So he finally decides to go in and actually deal some damage for his team right there. So they are gonna get the Conga kill. Legion team are not even gonna contest for it. And Hellboy team can look to push uh, and get the racks once they have this. 
look at items they have that major items. Look at Bubbles, he's going for a shrimp and hit. Yeah. Gondor just got his ass kicked. And uh, Marax is still only with that Helm of the Black Legion as well as the Shaman Head dress. So still no new items just yet. But they are gonna start pushing right now with their token of life. In fact, Bulwark picked up by Morax right here, so they can look to make a very strong push right now. Yeah, not too sure what Fling Beastwood was actually doing there. As I get my energy drink here, maybe Vex should get one too. Uh, but yeah, Fling Beastwood was just wasting so much time in that Congress pit. Uh, did he pick up the token as well? Yeah, so he got the token as well. But he was just absolutely wasting time. A uh, good what, 15 seconds just aimlessly hitting that Congor, uh, missing every single shot. Uh, I'm not too sure what he was trying to do there, maybe uh, communicating with his players or something. That's now action, Magnus just gets caught off position and instantly gets taken down, nuked down so quickly before the cameraman could even catch it there. And the Legion side are in a really bad spot, the Hellbone team are looking to push down, they are going to deward as well. They are going to look to push down this middle lane, they have the advantage, 13.5k gold advantage right now for the Hellbone team. Along with the token, so there you go, Morax's PK is in, he's instantly, oh wow, so the Morax is actually uh, getting Pushed away by more uh, Master of Arms away from the Weedfield. The Weedfield will hit, chunk and hit by the bubbles, and they will retreat back off after getting the Morax. After getting the, sorry, the Master of Arms kills and take down that tier 2 tower, but they are looking to continue on with the push. Uh, those Geometer Bane. Uh, images from Valkyrie just doing absolutely no damage as the Hellbone side now looking to push down this tier 3 tower from this middle lane and potentially take this Raxus. They can do it definitely here. Marax, uh, Master of Arms is still down. Um, Raxus is still there with that PK with full mana might I add. And they do have that token on Green Beastwood as well but the Legion team definitely putting up a resistance here. Will they be able to win this game? That is the question. Will they be able to come back from this game? That is the question. Yeah, bottom lane here. Action again. Magmas getting caught off position. Once again, he gets taken down by the help one side. I want to see them just push in right now because it, it it's... It's not looking good too good for the Legion team. They can easily push this down. Look at Fling Beastwood. He's doing so much damage onto this tower. This crippling volley is going to be used yet again. Marax is actually stunning there. Not too sure if that was on purpose or by accident, but he, he basically he wasted it on the creeps. And there we see here. Oh, oh, maybe they come up and we still got a hand to Marax. But look at the amount of damage Fling Beastwood is doing. And he just takes out all those illusions here. And he will try to take down this tower as well. But. Unable to do so so far. We feel though gonna land on him. He gotta get a triple volley. Nice tell. Oh wow, that is a huge waste of Forsaken Archer's altar there. That could have easily cost them the game. A uh, nice tablet saved there by the crippling volley, and that is just uh, I, I don't know. That was just really bad play there. And will the help one team be able to push down this tower? We will have to see. Yup, they are still grouped up at this middle lane right now. MOA is throwing the acid uh, can right there, trying to prevent them from pushing any further. But the Hellborn team, they are still standing strong. Slightly uh, low on the health, but they can still go for it. As the tower is denied. Initiation is not going to go just yet. There we go. Bubble jumps in, activates the shock hit. Lava search from Magnus, but probably not the best choice. Stuck within that steam map right now. And Legion team simply cannot do anything. We feel though, lands on Miraxis. But he is just so tanky. Dribbling volley onto both Maraxis as well as that Flint Beast, but simply not enough. And still, no heroes were going down for the Hellboy team. Only hero that went down thus far is that Magnus, so. It's still a very passive game despite you know, that clash. And in fact, the Kree is pushing down the bottom tower right there. So definitely a really good clash there uh, for the Hellbone side. They did get to take down that tower, though it was denied, of course. Uh, but they still have that token. Oh wait, yeah, they still have that token of life on that Flint Beastwood as well. As 2.9k saved up on him. What will he go for next? We will have to see as he picks up a Frostwolf Skull. He's just getting so farmed up now in this game. Six and oh, I believe the only hero in this game who has not died yet. Will we see an immortal in this game by him? You know, he has the potential to do so definitely here. As the uh, Legion team not wanting to give up here. They want to keep fighting, coming back so hard from the loser's bracket. Already losing once to Invasion Bazooka. Can they come back into this game and win this? We will have to wait and see. Uh, but they definitely can do it. Not, not impossible, definitely, as a arrow. Did it hit? No, it didn't hit as we are locked camera onto this Valkyrie. Uh, middle lane, we see Forsaken Archer trying to continue her farm. And, and yeah, basically 37 minutes into this game, almost reaching the 40 minute mark. Uh, 
big advantage for the Hellborn side and I just really want to see them start pushing now and just end it because they have the potential to do so. The tower is down at that middle lane. They have that token on the Flint Beastwood as well as the Frost Wolf Skull as well as the Geometer's Bane. He, they, he's just going to be able to do so much damage and be so tanky as well. I want to see them just end this right now. Yep, they are grouping up at this middle lane right now. Hellborn team grouping up. And looking at this, Valkyrie finally buys a homecoming stone, will port back. And Clash is imminent now. They are chipping away at the racks right here. We're taking Archer trying to defend, but look at Flint. He's just so much damage output. And Arrow landing on Bubba Fender. Weasel also coming out. Tripling volley will land as well as the Lava Surge. And Piercing Arrow, not the best placement, unfortunately. Shenlong, Myrmidon will get out of there safely. And no heal down from this team just yet, destroyed. surprisingly. So they are in a quite a good spot right now. Crippling Volley not going to land though as well. Flint Beast was still has that token of life there, so they need to keep that in mind. But they did get the melee rack, right? so that is some, definitely something uh, to go on. But will they go for the range rack right? though? That is the question. The objective completed here by the Hellborn side as they are able to take down that mini rack, providing them with a further. Uh, as Flame Beast with here gonna be taken down, but he does have the token as said earlier. He's gonna respawn and do lots of damage. Look at it. Look at the amount of damage coming out from the illusions. As Magmas comes in for a gonna instantly steam bomb, but just gets nuked down, melted so hard, and he just drops. They will pick up his rain drags as well. So nothing much the Legion team can do about this at all. Uh, the help one side maybe looking to maybe take down this top tower as well as the creeps have pushed in. They are still fighting at the uh, mid lane though. Bubble's gonna activate that jump in mid. Uh, Temple of Command used about onto that Maraxxus. Trying to maybe catch someone. Bubble's going in. Forsaken Archer again missing that ultimate here. As Bubbles goes in with that silence, trying to take on Forsaken Archer. He is down to a last hit. Plate Rider Alti though. Bouncing left and right. You have to spread a lot better than that as Bubbles goes back in. Master of Arms gonna use his ulti though. And there you go. Bubbles gonna get dropped. And yeah, so one hero down for the Hell One side after all that fighting. But the damage has been done though. Hell One team has been able to take down that mini two Raxus. Uh, though the token has been, you know, used up by that Flame Beastwood, but still, uh, Legion team, do you think they still, oh, no, okay, we see a stun going back in by Magnus here, and he's probably going to take him down, and she just won't stop, both teams just really fighting all out here, for second Archer, Kipling Volley, well, gonna land on this, uh, no, no, Flame Beastwood as Midas, was that Midas? Uh, there's no Midas in this game, sorry, Andromeda dropping, no, Plague Rider dropping off to the side there, and finally, Flame Beastwood will go down. So three heroes dropping for the Hell One side. That is that is really good plays from the Legion team. 17 to 11. But do you think they still have a chance in this game? It is definitely possible. You know? We've seen some amazing comebacks, you know, throughout our coverages uh, in Jerry Nohan. So we're not counting them out. I mean, we've seen SF SFCB uh, play really, really well in the past. You know, probably. A little bit of an the off day, I guess you would call it. It's definitely possible, but at the same time, you gotta keep in mind. Look at this Flint Beast with 4,000 gold saved up in the bank. That is a lot of money, guys. And in fact, uh, Moraxis has another 2,000 gold. So, they can get some really, really scary stuff. In fact, a uh, little bit curious what Flint Beast will go for. Seventeen to eleven right now. Hellborn team just gonna continue to extend their lead here and try to pick up on that farm. Twelve uh, k gold advantage. Not all too big. Forty one minutes into this game, definitely Legion team can still come back into this. No doubt about it. They just have to maybe drag this game out a little bit longer. But of course, uh, you know. From a personal view, I don't want to see that happen cause just because we're tired, but definitely from a c competitive caster, I definitely want to see that happen because uh, the Hellborn side, they are uh, looking to take the, this game right now, but the Legion team, they are putting up one hell of a good fight against Invasion Bazooka. Will they make a comeback? Let's just wait and see how things unfold, but it's eight, six kill advantage in favor of the Hellborn team now. Uh, Legion team, let's take a look at the item pickups here. Now Fireblade on that Valkyrie along with a Joe Meter's Bane. Uh, but for second Archer has a Nullstone and a Geometer's Bane as well. Shen Long basically with just that Striders, Magma Striders as well, Master of Arms, Striders and Energizer. So interesting to see uh, Energizer item pickup always being 
uh, picked up by a Master of Arms player. I, I don't know about you, Bex, but I I'm a bit clueless about an Energizer pickup. I have no idea either, to be honest. I mean, it it, it can has it have its uses, but I don't think it's uh, good for what it's uh, for what it's cost. But I know we have seen it uh, come into play quite a few times. You know, uh, setting up kills and chasing down heroes, but. Um, I don't know man, like, you definitely have a point that usually we do see it on a MOA, I guess it is simply because he is, of course, agility and the item, of course, it's agility based, yes, they are gonna work onto this Kongar right here, but the Legion team, they are suspecting, and they are aware that something is going on, they are making their way, arrow gonna land onto Kongar right there, so flash is imminent right here. Anyway, yeah, so Congo attempt here by the Hellboy side. I shouldn't be saying that too loud because the players were recording. But uh, hope the players have their volume turned down as well. Even though they have a uh, word of sight here, I think, or they are just well aware of what's going on here. They're gonna try maybe stop this Congo attempt as someone is still in that pit. Uh, Bubbles, oh, there you go. Uh, Flare is gonna be used here, and Bubbles gonna go with the ulti. No, as who got no, dropped down there? I don't even know. Uh, the, help, the chase is on onto this Legion team though, as they look to maybe take down this. Uh, Kongor kill as oh it was Magmas who actually dropped down. Uh, again Magmas is getting caught off position over and over again. And help one side, they are gonna get this Kongor kill. Just got his ass further kid. extend their lead and things are not looking too good for the lead inside. They can't do much right now and truth be told, I I don't think they can actually come back into this game. What do you think, Bex? Yeah, you're definitely right right uh there. I don't think they can but Mm, with this second token of life, I think the Hellbone team can pretty much end it right now. And they can easily get the rags, you know, with uh, the token as on the Flint Beast, who now has his Savage Mace as well. So he is hitting for 260 damage per hit. No, we're not even factoring the uh, propagations on the Savage Mace right there. So that is a lot of physical damage coming out from a Flint Beast right there. Of course, he does have his Geometer Bane, so. The tower is gonna go, go down really, really fast. And they do have a bound eye as they did in the previous clash. The counter that Valkyrie, of course, very, very annoying to deal with that ultimate of his. And they are starting to chip away at the tower right here. Who is gonna jump in here first, Eric? I don't know personally who's gonna jump in first. Uh, Hell One Team do look like they have the advantage. They have that token. I don't know what they're waiting for, to be honest. They can just take this game really easily now. The Legion side, uh, they basically cannot do anything right now to defend this, to be honest. They just don't have enough disables here. They only, well, they, they do they do have a lot of stuns, you know, and disables, so to say. They have that Shenlong, uh, that Magnus, that Master of Arms, but I, I don't know. It just seems like they have one that has great. There you go. Mirax is going to go and then really get his stun. Onto that Shenlong, he is taking a lot of damage. Bubbles gonna come with that ulti as well. Shenlong finally is gonna go down. I think Magnus went down there as well. Now they're chipping away at this uh, Master of Arms. The Forsaken Archer gonna use that Crippling Volley and catch that Flint Beast. But he's dropping really, really low, but he will survive so far. He's trying to the chip away the tower, finally gets it down. Uh, Rune of Identification gonna be used as well. Crippling Volley yet again. Also, that um, Mirax is here. As you help one side, they wanna just go in right now. They have that token of life. What are they waiting for? They do get down the tower here, but they are gonna go into retreat mode yet again. And this just further delays and extends this game. Uh, but I, I don't know. I really don't know how to say this game out, but basically, they have one team, they, they just can't win this game already. You know, they just have to go back, probably regen up and come back to this bottom lane, just finish this game already because they do not want to drag this out for too long. Forsaken Archer can make the comeback in this game, of course. Yep, that is definitely true. Uh, they did get the tower, but unfortunately did not get the rack, so they are going to have to make another push right here, waiting for Flint Beast to get another item perhaps. Yes, he does have 2.4k gold, of course he does have that token of life as well, so once he picks up his item, they can definitely look to end the game. Uh, Bubbles has 3k gold saved up as well. So, some major items are bound to be picked up. Even look at Andromeda, 2.5k gold. Like a boss. 
It's an Andromeda, man. 2.5k gold on an Andromeda. Something we n <laughs> almost never see on such a uh, dedicated support hero. Of course, Tableau Command on the Plague Rider as well. And actually, Bulwark picked up by Master of Arms. So that is nice. You know, to try and counter the Demonic Breastplate on the Moraxis right there. So that is definitely a good item pick up. Nice Hasted Bubbles trying to do some sneaky stuff. But not going to be able to right here. So Flash is on the way. The Hellborn team is starting to group up at this bottom lane. So hopefully this will be the final Flash. Of course, if the Legion team is unsuccessful in defending it, they are essentially out of the game. It is too big a deficit for them to make a comeback, in my opinion at least. As Valkyrie actually using the ultimate, so they are going to jump in first. But they choose not to jump in, they are hesitating right now. And here we go, Flash all over the place. And Magnus just instantly burns to the ground right there. Plague walks back and forth and back and forth. And Legion team just in complete disarray right now. Forsaken Archer gets taken out by the Flint Beast, which is too much damage man. coming out. And they are easily gonna get this set of racks, so not too sure what the Legion team was thinking right there. there. They used the Valkyrie ultimate but chose not to jump in, they hesitated, and that was pretty much what costed it for them. And the GG well plates are coming out, and the good logs are being worse as well, so. Vision must come in, they finally advanced out of the bracket uh, hit. So they are gonna go up against Orange Esports for a sport. Uh, for a spot rather at the grand final against TTC and there we go the Legion has officially conceded so they will move on and face up against RG Sport which is the next game so any final thoughts Mr. Arctic Shadow? Please no more farming games I don't want to see any more of those I want action packed games there's only 35 kills in this game not too much here so shout out to uh, Orange as well as Invasion Bazooka Please, next game, more kills, less farming. Thank you. Yep, so we will be bringing you the next game. Not too sure when that is going to be though, but just stay tuned guys. We will keep you guys updated.